Joe Namath, Bart Starr, Ozzie Newsom, four former Alabama stars now in the Hall of Fame. But the journey to Canton starts on draft day. Ray Crawford here with Pete Futek and Doug Chapman as we draft the top tied prospects. We're looking at the six best players that are eligible. We're going to let you start us off, Doug. Who would you take first? Well, first I'm going with Landon Collins, strong safety. He puts the strong in the position, strong safety. Saw him down at the Sugar Bowl. Good-looking kid, great size, in-the-box player, not fast enough or range enough to be a free safety, but typical strong safety. We call that in Virginia strong. He will come up and hit you, not a tackler. He's a striker, could be a Pro Bowl player at the next level. We're in Chicago. I'm going to call my guy good, Amari Cooper. You're leaving him on the board for me. He's going to be the best wide receiver in this draft. I know everyone loves Kevin White and Devontae Parker. Don't overthink this. Cooper's got all the tools, all the skills. He is going to be a superstar for the next 10 years. And I get the next pick, so I'm taking TJ Yeldon. I know there are other guys on the board I like from Alabama, and I know he's got fumbling problems, and he was a little bit better a few years ago, but he's a big, strong back who looks like he'll be a great runner in a rotation. I'm going to go fourth with Xavier Dixon, outside linebacker. Trey DePriest got all the headlines there at the linebacking position, but Dixon's one of those guys that can be a great pro. Six foot three, 260, can put his hand in the dirt. They can also stand him up. And then next, I'm going to go with Jostin Fowler, fullback. If he was two inches taller, I'd take him higher. Only five foot 11, about 260 pounds. Downhill, ISO, lead blocker guy. Only had 19 receptions in college. They wanted to put him at H back. Has good hands, just hasn't used them. Watch a team in the NFL get him, flex him out a little bit, use those hands more. Kind of a lot of fun. You're leaving me trade to Priest, but with the final pick in our Alabama draft, I'm going to go with Austin Shepard, offensive tackle. He's probably going to be an undrafted free agent, but he's got the right size. He's a tough guy. He's a good uh, tackle who can be kind of a swing tackle at either position. He's going to be a decent backup. He's not going to be necessarily a starter, but in this draft, I'll take my chances on an Alabama offensive tackle. All right, a fine collection of players you guys have collected here. here. Here are the six picks. Uh, one name, though, that's not on this list, though, is Blake Sims, 35 passing and rushing touchdowns. Doug, why isn't he there? Yeah, from a mental standpoint, he's an NFL quarterback. But, like, I stood next to him in the Sugar Bowl. He's shorter than I am. And he, he can't see over the offensive line. I think he'll go to camp, get a shot at quarterback, maybe be moved to running back. Very athletic, but not a quarterback at the next level. He's going to get that number 33 jersey at some <laughs> point, and they say, hey, try to be a running back for us. You're absolutely right. He's, he's a good quarterback, maybe hangs on as a practice squad guy, but he's not a starter in the NFL. Well, Bart Starr went 17th around no, way back in Bart the day. Starr. He ain't got that no more. Crazier like things can so so happen. That's right, a no. long time. If they had 10 more rounds, he might get done. <laughs> That's after. right. Sims has had one of his better career passing days against Florida and beat the Gators last year. We're drafting the Florida Gators here on Campus Insiders.